Hey everybody, Haku here with my live reaction or read through for Kubera chapters of, well, season 2 chapters or episodes 24, 25, and 26. We're going to be finishing out the caution arc, sub arc section of titles. We're going to be finishing out caution. As always, Kubera is incredible, so I'm excited to read. Um, and also, not only am I going to be reacting to the chapters, but like we started last week, after each chapter, I'll also go and read the um, and read the afterword as well. So we've got all that to do, and I guess there's not really much more to say. I will say that I love the three parts of caution that I read last week because it's like we really just had a direct continuation of what we were doing with Weapon of the God, I think was, or a Weapon of the God, the Weapon of the God. Like, that was really good, and we continued directly on. Nothing really changed with the content we were getting, but with the presentation of it, the the colors were a little bit darker, there were a lot more reds, and, like, even though the scenes were the same, just the way that we lingered on certain expressions, the way that we paced things out, everything just felt tense. Like, this is titled Caution, and I don't know if just the title of it being Caution had an effect on me too, but reading it, it was like, even though the content itself didn't change, the way that it was presented to us changed in such a way that it just... It felt so, so serious, so tense, and like, that was just really, I think, expertly done. And just in general, the story that we've got going on right now, the characters, it's, it's amazing right now. I think that Kubera's in one of the coolest places that it's been since I've started reading. So I'm excited. Let's go through these three chapters. We're starting off with episode 24, Caution Part 4. Uh, of course, it doesn't not, er, of course it does not reflect all the time. Plus, you cannot see the true er, reflection of yourself. Even if you're lucky enough to get reflected, you need someone else to look at the reflection for you. Still, it's quite an attraction of the temple. We get crowds of visitors during the temple's opening period. How oh, wait. If you're interested, do you want me to look at... And then this is where we ended things last time. We fade into the title splash. What are you doing? Uh, how foolish am I? Who cares what she sees at... Er, who, who cares what she sees when I'm gonna kill her anyway? All I need to do is just shove her into the water, that's all. Are you concerned about showing something of you that should be kept as a secret? She smiles. Well, I know that there are people who feel that or who feel that way, since the lake sometimes reflects some of your most embarrassing secrets. Sorry, I won't look. It's gonna be fine if I just turn back and keep on walking, right? Now is the good time to push her. I won't look down. So, don't walk too far behind. Walk a little closer to me. If you trip over and fall when you're far behind me, I won't be able to save you. Man, he's caught up for a moment. You should be the or you should be the one to be careful. Walking in such a place without looking down could be dangerous. Oh, come on. I'm the priestess of this temple. I can walk across this place even if I'm blindfolded. I don't think I can do it now. If my Shura form is being reflected on the water, I'm sure that she would notice it, even though she's looking at the other side. There's no way she could be speaking in such a calm tone if she saw it. It seems like the lake didn't show my sh er, show my Shura form. Should I say that I'm lucky for not getting caught? It's okay. There will be other chances to kill her. I think, me personally here, I think she did see it but she's just giving him a chance as a person. She stops. Stay calm. Do not- okay, well, I did- I did the reactor thing where we're immediately seeing it like a panel later. Stay calm. Do not tremble. I saw nothing. And we get the silhouette. Huh? Asha told me to get dressed quickly and come out. Where is she? I can't find Ron or Yuta either. Jeez. And she thinks back to when she was being choked. Oh yeah, somebody asked me what I thought of the choking scene. Um, like how I interpret it. I interpreted it as, and again, don't spoil me if this is something spoilery from, from the future. Because we know she didn't just immediately go there. She got dressed first. 
Uh, so there was at least a little bit of time to think. I don't think that Asha was unconscious. I just think that she had a memory where God Kubera did something really, really bad, like the dream was a memory, and it brought up some really bad past stuff for her. And I think she lost it emotionally. I think that she got caught up in her emotions from that dream picking at something that's like picking at an old wound that's like really raw for her. And she lost it for a second there and was taking out her anger toward the god Kubera on Lees, who of course has the name. And then like she got snapped out of it and composed herself. I don't think she was unconscious for this. I don't think she was... I don't know, being controlled or anything. I just think that she lost it and lashed out because of something bad that happened to her. She lashed out at Lee's because of God Kubera. That's how I interpret it. That's my theory, prediction, whatever. Gosh, quit recalling it. She already explained that she was half asleep. Whatever. I'm just going to practice using the bracelet on my own. And like... It could be one of those things where I th I feel like half asleep isn't like just an excuse. Again, we know she was she had the wherewithal to get dressed first, but I do think it's one of those things where if maybe she hadn't just woken up, if obviously if she hadn't just had that dream, she wouldn't have lost it like that. So it's one of those things where Asha in her right mind wouldn't have done that, but she was just all caught up in something really, really, really tragic. Whatever, I'm just going to practice using the bracelet on my own. We have a wind. Whoa, this is amazing, really. Without having a resurrection attribute, how'd you use all those Hoti Asfins in a row? You also used Hoti Brahma a lot before, when you were in the channel, right? What's more amazing is that you're young. How can you do that? This is so unfair. And then we have a uh, note... You can only use Hoti spells basically once a day if you do not have the Sorry, hiccup. If you do not have the same birth attributes, but the number of uses can be increased with practice. Well, I noticed that you often use Hoti Kubera uh I noticed that you also use Hoti Kubera quite often, when you don't have an earth attribute, Ron Syrafe. Hmm? Oh that's right. I practiced Hoti Kubera a lot. I feel that using Hoti Kubera along with beating is actually a much more comfortable than using other magic in general. Also, there's no way anyone on our side is going to get killed for miscalculating or for miscalculation. This magic's awesome, right, Yuda? And Yuda nods. That is a really, really good point. It's a lot less dangerous using Kubera magic compared to some of the others. Like, it feels like there's less that could go wrong, I guess. If I would think of anything that could go wrong, it's like blowback on yourself, which would be bad, but we haven't seen that be a thing so far. I guess it would just maybe fail and not work, if anything. Plus, again, it's a really safe bet. It's like, okay, shooting lightning bolts, which could hit an ally, even in a normal situation, but then you have to aim, and then if you miss, you only get a certain amount per day. Or you could just use Hoti Kubera and get really good at just fighting physically. So it's actually a really good one to practice out of all of them, honestly. Then, you seem to be much closer to him now. I thought you were afraid of halves. Well, you does not a half, is he? Yes, but it's much more usual to be afraid of Shuras than halves. But of course, the reason he's afraid of halves is because they can't control themselves when they get caught up in the, like, emotional resonance. So it's like, because of his specific reasoning, it's like, the reason isn't because halves are related to Shuras, it's that you never know when they won't be able to control themselves, and he has literal, like, personal trauma when it comes to that. Anyhow, I'm glad. I was worried about searching for a new sponsor for Yuta, but this license, er, but this lightens the burden on my shoulders. What are you saying? It's you who, er, it's you who sponsors Yuta. I have, er... I have no thought of sponsoring someone who cause I have no thought of sponsoring someone forever who keeps on causing trouble. I, God damn it, I told you. Yuta was reluctant to do it, but I still insisted or I still insisted him. If you're gonna scold him, just do it to me. Or if you want compensation for the reparation, I'll gladly pay. There's no need for you to pay me or there's no need for you to pay me for that, Ron Syrafe. Whatever the case, I'm Yuta's current sponsor, so it's my duty to repair what he's done. 
Man, and we like it seems like between each exchange, we're just getting these shots of each character's face like this. Hey, Asha, I've been thinking this for a while, but can't you be a little nicer? Your attitude, I mean. I personally don't care much about it, but I feel bad watching Lee's and Yuta. And then, even that attitude of mine will be missed when you can no longer see it. Then, what are you saying? You're talking as if you're going to die soon or something. And again, how soon is soon? I mean, I know there have been death flags, but I've always like kind of been hoping that they would find some way to save Asha, power of main characters and all that, and things wouldn't go the way that God Kubera was predicting for Lee's. But what if things just do? What if Asha dies and it's sooner rather than, like, I can't even imagine it happening. Asha dying and then sooner rather than later. And then Lee's going through all this stuff. Abandon your cards. Victory not, er, cannot be held with them. All of you will die. No, you're wrong. Victory can still be achieved without abandoning the cards. Although something else will be needed, which can take the place of those to be abandoned. She turns back and smiles. To be continued. That feel Like, honestly, I don't know if I'm supposed to be or feel hopeful hearing that and seeing her smile. But I don't. That feels ominous to me. That feels like Asha is going to try to pull some craziness that's going to get Lee's all wrapped up in everything. We know that Asha was, honestly, as much as I like her, pretty much manipulating Lee's to get her to come here to get to the sword. So whatever it is that Asha's planning on doing, I don't know how sketchy it's going to end up being. But that's it. So from there, let's, um, let me flip over so you can see it better and let me read the afterword for this one. Okay, here's the afterword. It looks kind of short this time around and I have it like pushed towards the bottom so the notes aren't on screen because I believe I've been warned that the notes can be spoilery so I don't want to show them on screen in case any of you were also following along with me. Usually though if there are any like spoiler things in the afterwards I'm pretty sure they're usually like marked where you have to like click to show spoilers or, or like there's a spoiler warning or something because I think in the past there's been something like that before so there is a warning if there's something like that. Uh, so I have been able to stay away from things like that. And usually when I go onto a page, I just go onto the chapters page and don't look at any section other than the afterward section. Um, so here we have the afterward. Asha, some readers predicted that the second scene from the season two prologue would appear soon because Ron was wearing the same clothes at the hotel. And I need to go back and reread the prologue to like try to memorize these scenes so I can try to pick them out when they come up. Um, Nervous Teo. Of all Teo's single shots, this cut might be the closest shot she's got. My mom looked at this and told me she's very pretty. Wait, huh? It seems that both Sagara and Teo turned out so well when I don't even try to draw them beautifully. But on the other hand, I try my, bre er, try my best to draw Brilith pretty and I keep messing up. I'm sorry, Brilith crying icon. Lee's shaking her head. Lee's didn't appear much this episode, but she still made a big impression. And then we have Asha's back. Asha smiles a lot, actually. She doesn't laugh out loud, but she grins a lot. I haven't counted how often she's done that, though. Plenty. So, I, kn I was going to say, who would I think are the prettiest characters since they mentioned Teo being pretty? Like, who? Reading so far, there are probably characters that I'm forgetting that I should say. Like, I know I really like Roosh, but I, I don't even remember what Roosh looks like that much. Um, her, like, actual design doesn't even, like, uh, factor in that much to how much I like the character. I like Lorraine as well. I wouldn't, like, I wouldn't call Lorraine pretty necessarily, but I like Lorraine's character design a lot. It's very simple. And I love when you can have a simple design for a character, but still have that character be, like, cool and strong. I really like when we get characters like that. I th I actually think Teo might be the, like, of course Asha counts, I think, to me, but I think Teo might actually be the prettiest character so far to me in Kubera. I'm trying to think. There, again, there's probably characters I'm forgetting about. But yeah, when I think Teo comes to mind, and honestly it's funny because I know specifically that Curry Gum's not, well, 
I guess Curry Gum is trying to present Lee's this way. I would say that Lee's is also one of the prettiest characters so far, despite the fact that Curry Gum is like is like Lee's is much uglier. I'm just purposefully drawing her prettier, so I guess it counts for me to say that Lee's is one of the prettier characters. But yeah, with all of that aside, uh, I guess let's go on to uh, episode 25. What? What is it? Why are you laughing all of a sudden? Because it's funny. Once again, I'm surprised by your stupidity, Ron Syrafe. What did you say? You seem to have forgotten that you're, er, you're to leave us very soon and go back to Misty Shore. You have to graduate, don't you? <laughs> that face, that face is so good. We haven't seen a lot of comedy. I just realized, too, maybe that's another part of this feeling more tense. We have seen almost every panel as the characters fully drawn out in Caution so far, whereas usually there is a lot of comedy panels. There's a lot of chibi panels of the artwork. Even when serious stuff is going on, there's a lot of chibi panels. But again, there's been a lot of dark panels. There's been a lot of reds, like we see the background here is pink. And almost every panel hasn't been all chibi. It's been fully like drawn out as far as the characters go. So maybe I think all of that is just adding to the tension of caution. Because this is like rare. This is a really good shot. But it feels like it's actually been a little bit since we've seen some of these uh, fun, like caricature chibis. The channel, or the channel crossing, which was your graduation quest, is now over and so is comparing our scores. All that remains is the neutral bow affair. As soon as its owner is selected between you and Lee's, there's no reason for you to stay here. Meaning that obviously you will no longer be with me. Thus how I act, including my attitude, has nothing to do with you anymore. Am I wrong? Uh huh. Uh, right, that's true. But then, you said that I was going... Or you said that I was saying things as if I'm going to die soon. Now I see how you've... Or now I see how you've been thinking about me. Huh? Uh, I didn't mean that. Well, it's just that you sound so determined when you said it. Uh, hey, Asha, hold on a second and listen. I didn't mean anything bad when I said it. Listen to me. Gosh, that's not cool at all. And we have this look on Yuta's face. Again, some of the facial expression panels have been really, really good these two chapters. All right, caution part five. We're seeing Lee's practicing. Whoa. No matter how hard I try, switching it on or switching it on and getting stronger are all I can do. It seems that the attacks I executed when I first wore this bracelet were transcendental skills for sure. Can I not use those skills unless there are sure is around? I'm sure what Asha wants is just turning on the bracelet, but to actually activate some kind of proper skills, what should I do? It doesn't look like I'll be able to use them anytime soon, but then Ron will take the bow. I'm certain it was Dad's name. Okay, so she saw the name when it... Sorry, Hiccup, when it happened. Which means it could be the weapon which Dad used to use. <sighs> I have an idea. Since Ron's super rich, maybe he could let me have the bow if I tell him that it's actually my Dad's name. So you're saying you're Ral Lee's a secret daughter? And then, laughing, say something that makes sense. Nothing from you resembles him except for that curly hair. <laughs> and then... That won't do. There's no proof that, or there's no proof that could support it. It'd be better to say nothing about it. What a nice bracelet you're wearing. We met in the Garden of the Earth Temple yesterday. Do you remember? We have Claude. Ah, the man we were about to ask for directions. Good to see you again. What a coincidence. But what's so nice about the bracelet? It's a God class item. That's true, but honestly, it looks ugly. Are you staying somewhere near this place? Now, I usually stay inside the temple, but I came out last night to check for something. And I also heard that the neutral bow was fired from the hotel nearby, so I've decided to start my investigation from here today. Oh, Yuta was the one who fired the bow. Yuta? Yes, he's the half I'm traveling with. He was next to me at the temple yesterday. I see. I think I remember who you're talking about. By the way, my name is Claude Yui. What's yours? I'm Lise Hyas. Then Lise. Would you mind talking to me for a sec? Er, it won't take much of your time. I just want you to tell me a few things about the neutral bow, based on what you've seen. Hmm, Asha never met, er, 
I should never mention that I should not talk about it. And if he's staying at the temple, I guess he's only investigating for the security of the city. And again, I wonder, because Claude is definitely presented as being sketchy so far, but not like bad. Not sketchy, like sketchy, but not in a antagonistic way. So it makes me wonder, is Claude just, are we meant to think he's sketchy, but then he turns out to be like a really nice, cool, good guy? Or... Is it just foreshadowing for him actually being sketchy? <laughs> All right, I'll answer whatever I know about it. Thank you. And now, thank you for your time, Lise. I was able to do my investigation easily, thanks to you. You're welcome, but I haven't told you much. I feel sorry er, that you treated me to such an expensive meal. Do you always trust others so easily? Huh? I'm a stranger to you, Lise. But you only answered my questions without asking her anything about me. Ah, that's because you don't seem like a bad person. Are you usually confident with your intuition? Rather than to say it's my intuition, I just believe that I'm right. I think, or er, I try to think of a person as a good person and treat them nicely if he or she doesn't do anything particularly bad. You resemble him. Resemble who? The fighter on the er the fighter whose name had been shown on the neutral bow. Do you know him well? No, I only just heard about him. I was only a child during the upheaval. Ah, and then. And I feel like we don't need the uh, we don't need the actual text for disappointed here. Like much like the other expression panels, I I get it. Anyway, since I came to find out some new information thanks to you. I'll give you an answer to whatever you ask. You can ask three questions freely. That is really good, but it makes me wonder how Lise is going to use them. Uh, huh. If you tell me to ask all of a sudden, um, I can't think of any, uh, by any chance. Do you know the transcendental skills that can be used with this? What a silly question. Or, what a silly question. Of course you wouldn't. I do. What? I've done some research on the god class items of god Kubera. I don't know how to put the bracelet on, since it's passed down to only the Priest of Earth, but I do know some things about it other than that. Originally, the bracelet was created to restrain its user's power, but I heard that it was adjusted to make it possible for a human wearer to use five types of God Kubera's transcendental skills without using much vigor. So do each of the gods have specific transcendental skills, much like the Shura? And then it kind of makes you question what's really truly the difference between the like top gods like the original gods and the Shuras who are kind of seemingly they come about in a similar way. And they both use transcendental skills. Humans use magic and quarters use magic. And magic doesn't necessarily come from their own power fully so much as it's channeling and asking for the power of the gods essentially and the gods are bestowing it. At least I'm pretty sure that's how magic worked. Whereas halves and full shuras themselves, and I guess gods too, don't use magic because they're not like channeling a god's power. They're using their own power. They're using transcendental skills. So I think I'm putting that together. And then. So it's like, is is Hoti Kubera and Bhavati Kubera and like are all the spells essentially just watered down versions of whatever that specific god's transcendental skills are okay so we're getting an actual full scene now with god Kubera and Shes we haven't seen Shes in forever you seem or at least I'm pretty sure that's Shes sorry if I got things wrong you seem to be always around this area I suppose that's because you need to open the next gate and you never stay in one place. Did you abandon the half-kid you used to take around? Of course not. She's sleeping like a baby, so I got some free time to visit you. But it's strange that I don't see any Shuras around here. Are they away to attack somewhere again? If you have no intention of... So this is present time. If you have no intention of cooperating, I would like you to leave. You taking Gantarva to Aterra earlier was also... Didn't it turn out better thanks to that? If I had not brought Gantarva, everyone who attacked Atera that day would have all died by God Agni and Cossack. I don't think you were hoping for that to happen. Seems like you've become quite reckless. 
You were not like this when I saw you last, if I remember correct. What changed you to become like that, or to become like this? Was it Ananta's death that enough? So we see God Kubera has had a lot of connections here with the various Shura, but specifically getting touchy about Ananta's death. I'll tell you one thing. You seem to have doubts about whose side I'm on, but I was asked by my mother to be on yours. That's unexpected. I thought it was your own decision to come to me. But not er, but I had no idea that Ayravata interfered like this. You need to listen carefully. I'll not be joining your forces, but I will be standing on your side. My mother knows that this plan's not what you truly want. So please, do not abandon yourself like this. To be continued, that's a good scene to end on. We haven't seen either of these two in a while. I feel like probably since season one. Now I'm really intrigued. We have just been having a crazy build to this arc. Like this arc, I don't know if season two, I think is decently long. I'm pretty sure it's much longer than season one, but I'm not 100% sure. So it's like, I don't know if we're going to be going around to different places or if we're just going to be here because what we've done so far, we have been building and building. There have been so much, like even the start of last chapter with the Teo and Gantarva stuff, we have put, like Kurigam has put so much time, so much effort into building these characters, building the tension here with caution, and like setting up so many things that it's like when all of this comes crashing down, what does that look like? Does Marina just attack this place and then the other Shura all follow suit? Do gods like Kubera get involved? Shes, of course, isn't going to be like fighting alongside them, but he's on Ku or God Kubera's side. And again, I think things will probably be more complex than that. How does Yuda play into things? What's Asha's plan? We still, we've been in the city for a while now, still haven't gone to get the sword. The temple opening has been set up. Gantarva still wrestling with himself over what to do about killing Teo. Like, there is so, so much that I love and adore how much time that we have spent just living with just sitting with. And I love this. I love how Kubera is being written because so many people will call series slow or say, yeah, I don't want to see all the boring day-to-day -day interactions. I want things to happen. But this is, to me, just masterful. I love when I read a long-running series. I praised it before in season one. I love when you just let us sit with the world and sit with the characters because in the long term to me, that pays off so much more than just jumping to this thing, then jumping to this thing, then jumping to this thing. Because we have spent so much time just living in this world with all of these characters that we're seeing that now when something does happen, I think it just, it feels so meaningful. And even if something like massive doesn't happen, but I'm pretty absolutely sure it will, given how serious things have been getting lately, uh, especially with big things like Marana on the way here already. Like, of course, and whenever we get to the sword stuff, but even if it takes us, like, two dozen more chapters to get there, it's like... It's, I, I'm excited for those two dozen chapters. I'm excited for whatever the next chapter here is. Just this build, just seeing these characters exist and do things has added so much to them. I feel like I know these characters so much more than I do in a lot of other series where we don't spend this kind of time with the characters. Like, I just, I just think in the long term, it makes things so much more important, so much more impactful. But either way, before we get into the next one, these have been two kind of long-ish chapters as far as Kubera goes. Uh, but before we go into the next one, let's see what the afterword is this time. Looks like it's not super short this time around. First up, we have God Kubera. God Kubera's finally reappeared after a million years, lol. Agni logged out from episode 20 and logged in for episode 77. God Kubera logged out from episode 88 and logged in for episode, er, for episode 225. Agni seems to have gone underwater for, long, for a longer amount of time, but you should take into account the hiatus before season two. Then, 
I should watch the clock while I'm working, but I was in a trance. If I had skipped a scene, I could have kept up with the time. Sorry and thanks for waiting on the work for or work of such an idiot. Uh, then, for those of you asking me about the release of the next book, due to my deadline situation, I can't guarantee book four will be released. I, too, want to get the new volume published more quickly. But my webtoon series is more important than that. So is that a book for a different series or something, or just... Does Kurigam write separate books on the side, or is that talking about physical releases? Because if there are physical Kubera releases, I would love to buy them. Uh, but I know that for Manwa, that's not super common for them to have official English releases. Uh, but even if not English, even if I could get a Korean version, that'd be sick. Even if I can't read it, just to like have on the shelf, you know? Um, for those of you who raised a question regarding the time of my blog posts, as I've told you before, I write my commentary right after I'm done with the deadline, and it's set to upload on Monday at 11.30pm in private mode. I changed the setting to open to the public after I confirmed the webtoon's uploaded on Naver, so when the webtoon is uploaded later than the usual time, it might make a slight difference between the commentary time and the webtoon update time. Now we have Yuta looking at Ron. Ron's able to solve complex math problems with luck, but sometimes gets simple things wrong, Asha's gender. Looks like he got something else wrong today, maybe. And then Claude introducing himself. The older guy was so polite and took off his hat. Lee's just waved. <laughs> Cultural stuff not translated. And then God Kubera and Chess. These two are very big, but look so small here. Then Chess's Shura form is horse-like, so he's really fast. When he gallops, he can catch up to some Garuda clan members, but he's slower than Marana. Okay, very cool. I can't wait until I'm like, again, like 500 chapters deep and I know all of these different Shura classifications and spells and gods by heart and uh, can just like dive deep into like wiki content and stuff to remind myself. Um, plus, I can make like, I don't know, like lists and stuff in the future. I'm so excited for stuff like that. But we still have plenty more to go before then, including... In this video, we still have another chapter to read. So uh, let's go to episode 26. We start with more shots of the environment, but actually I like the way they did this again where it's fading into the title splash. They've done that for a couple chapters here. Okay, all finished. Let me read them to you and feel free to correct me if there's anything I've missed. One? Okay, so we're, we're actually going to learn the abilities that she can get from this. Perforation hit. Stabbing or dissecting while being unarmed without using a weapon. It is told that there were cases of some priests of Earth using this skill for long distance attacks as well. Okay, so that's cool. You could even have like a long range, like, flying hit from this. Repulsion Force. A skill to push things away that are close to your body. Be cautious when setting the attack range since your equipment or your weapon or equipment can bounce off. And then three is counterattack. A skill that pauses and reflects the transcendental attack set on me by the opponent. It's said that because the loss of vigor is commensurate to the force of the transcendental, it is unable to block powerful transcendental attacks. For regeneration, if you receive a fatal attack when you still have vigor left, you can use the rest of the vigor to heal yourself to the state you were in before you, or before you were attacked. Okay, so I do believe we've seen that. This will not be activated unless the attack's critical enough to kill you. Okay, that's... That's actually big then, because we did see that before in the channel, right? Unless I'm remembering wrong, I thought we saw that happen. So that attack was strong enough to kill these. And then Earthquake, a skill that shakes a specific range of area that surrounds you. It's, er, it's told that the skill could even shift the region's topography depending on the amount of vigor you have. Wow, regarding... Er, Regarding that you have heard it for the first time, it's well summarized. Looks like you study well at school. Ha <laughs> ha, study. <laughs> Thank you for the compliment. But for now, this is all I can tell you. A way to use each transcendental, well, that's going to be the part where you need to work on. That cannot be taught by someone else, but the owner of the bracelet has to learn through experience. Adding on to that, of all the former priests of Earth, there weren't many who could master all the skills. I see. Well, since number three and four can only be used in special situations, number one, two, and three are the ones I should practice. One, two, and five, maybe they mean? I have no idea about number five, but I think I've used one and two before. Okay. So, hold on. We're going back up. 
Four, again, doesn't seem like something you need to practice. That's just an automatic thing, right? Um, unless you need to just be attuned enough with the bracelet to be able to use it. Three is a specific situation, but again, something that, like she said, you could practice. And then one and two are the ones you could really practice. And five is where she's like, eh, I don't know about that. Like, it seems... I don't, I don't even know if it seems that useful because it just like it shakes the specific area around you, which could like throw your opponent off balance. Like if you're really strong, it can change the arena, but that doesn't act like it's not like it doesn't make it sound like you can directly only hit a certain thing specifically. Like you can't just aim it to only hit your opponent without causing collateral damage. So it seems like you would be better off just really really focusing more on the uh, first skill okay where was I? I have no idea about number five but I think I've used one and two before oh really I've heard that even a priest of earth needs to put in a lot of effort and train to master the way to use it you're remarkable <laughs> well I don't even remember how I activated them are there any other questions you want to ask you still have two more questions you can ask hmm well, I do have many light questions, but they're too significant to ask. She thinks about Asha. Um, let's pretend a magician's trying to kill a person. That's illegal. Yes, but just saying if. What kind of method would the magician use? Of course each magician would have different magic they would prefer to use, but no other magic would be better suited to kill somebody than this one. Is it going to be his? Yeah, Hoti Yama, because Yama is the um god of death in Hindu. Or I think it might be, I might be putting the emphasis wrong. I think it might be Yama, but Yama just sounds more natural to me as an English speaker, so sorry if I'm wrong. Um, so yeah. And then she stops for a bit. Hey, you scared me. I thought you actually used it. <laughs> and then, this is the best one. But you've got to learn the usage of silent magic of lifespan first to have an actual effect with this magic. If this is too difficult to use, the second one would be the Marut spells. Uh, you can use Hoti Marut, which tears things apart, or Bhavati Marut, which lacerates other thi or others along with the space. If you have mastered the Marut magic, there'd be no reason to attack someone physically, right? Well, that differs from magician to magician. If their magic skills aren't that good, they could rather choose to do it physically. What if their magic s or skills are outstanding? Then they would use magic, without a doubt. How they would, right? If they were to kill, they would have used a Marut spell. They wouldn't try to suffocate the person or anything, right? So that's what happened to you? Were you strangled to the point where you thought you could die from it? Dear me, he was at the temple so he'd recognize who I'm traveling with. No, no, that's not it. It's just I had a nightmare. You did? I don't know in detail about the nightmare you had, but... Don't think too much about it. No, I won't. Thank you. And then he glances over to see Ron and Asha. Every time I see or say Ron, I want to say Ron Zyrafe, as, as Asha does, like, every time. Again, I just can't tell if Claude is sketchy or if he actually means well and Asha is sketchy. I mean, they're both, they're both kind of sketchy on the surface as a reader. Hmm, I'm sorry, but allow me to answer your last question or question the next time we meet. I've got to leave now. See you again, Lise. Huh? The next time we meet, we will meet again. You're going to the Temple of Chaos, I believe. Ah, uh, you knew that. Alright, he must have heard it at the temple. I'll also be heading toward the Temple of Chaos to do some research. There's only a few days left until the temple is open to the public, so we'll meet again soon. I will answer whatever the question is. So... Think carefully of what you really want to know, since I don't usually do this. Alright. Claude Yui, you met him and told it er and told everything to him? Gosh, so loud. I just told a little about the neutral bow. Don't you have any sense of doubt? You don't even know who that guy is. Why would you just Hey Asha, chill out? Lise must have been bored since no one was with her today, and that could have made her want to talk to him. And what's so wrong about Claude knowing some stuff? He's a priest, after all, so he could just be asking about the incident for the safety of the city. 
To not take this lightly, you know nothing. And then he realizes how she's like really being genuine here. And she notices how she slipped up there. I, I kind of just blew up there. Anyway, Lees, be aware of strangers. You shouldn't be just giving away inside stories like today. Uh, okay, I'll keep that in mind. I'm sorry, Yasha. It's okay for today, but just don't forget what er, but don't forget what I just said. Asha, aren't you going to eat? I'm okay. And she leaves. Hey, Chicky, cheer up. If there's a fight between Asha and you, you have me on your side. I'm not a Chicky. Then we still have Yuda silent in all of this. We see what is maybe the sunset, but I don't know. Sometimes it's a little bit weird around here. Some of the books are The Lake of Reflection, Characteristics of Gnostica, Distinguishing Superior Shuras, Loophole in the Checkpoint, Okay, Amnesia, The True Nature of a Half, this is going to be Teo, isn't it? Because they're all things related to The Lake of Reflection, where she could be like, you know, looking up, hey, what does it mean if I see a giant Gnostica Shura within The Lake of Reflection? Um, characteristics of Gnostica to be like, is that what I just saw? Again, same with Distinguishing Superior Shuras, both of the loophole in the checkpoint, because it's like, how did he get into the checkpoint? Amnesia, because she might genuinely be like, like either genuinely think he does have amnesia, or genuinely is trying to figure out if he has amnesia or not. And then, of course, the true nature of a half, just checking, like, you know, is that what a half would look like in the Lake of Reflection? Is that what I saw? Okay, so it is Teo, of course. Teo, I brought what you've requested. Here's the pamphlet from the Magic Union theme gallery exi er, exhibition. Ah, thank you. Teo's eyes look really pretty there. Or I, singular. I thought art was not of your interest. Are you thinking of visiting the ex er, exhibition? No, I remember there was a picture of Anastica in this pamphlet, but I can't remember it clearly, so I just want to check it. Then, we see looking similar to the silhouette in the lake. Chapter 16 caution and next chapter reflection and i th okay so seeing reflection makes me think again we have all these dual we have all these dual meanings in all of the titles and caution can mean a million things caution because god kubera is scheming and the shura are going to attack this place caution because claude's plotting and seems sketchy caution because Asha could be on death's door or also plotting something. Caution because Gantarva could be killing Teo. Like, there's a ton of things that could refer to. Reflection made me think, at first, like, it makes you think, like, oh, like a character reflecting on something. I think it could be that, but also, literally, people's reflections when we go to the opening or whatever of the temple, we could see what the reflection could tell us about various characters. Okay, very good section of chapters. I think Caution might be one of my favorites so far. It's like, it was so simple, almost every chapter was just the characters talking with each other. Like, there wasn't any big action, there weren't any big twists to me that I can remember, but it just built tension so masterfully. The conversations and the facial expressions and the art were so good that it's like, on just this fundamental level, I was like edge of my seat hooked the entire time through both last read through and this read through. Like, I really think caution is one of my favorite sections so far. Like nothing big actually happened, but it felt like every scene just had me hooked. Like that was so good. That was so, so, so good. Okay, so we'll start Reflection next week, but before we do that, let's go uh, check out the afterword for this one. Okay, this one's a little shorter than the last one. We have Claude and Lees. Lees, you need shoes. <laughs> Claude isn't really all that tall, but because of the difference in the height of the shoes, he's almost a head dollar. And then Transcendental 5 panel. The five Transcendentals of the Golden Knight. In fact, Lees has already used all five of them. However, she can't remember how she used three of them, and she can't even remember using the other two at all. 
and then soft focus Claude. Claude's on the handsome side, but he has poor eyesight so his thick glasses ruin it a bit. In fact, it's rare for high-ranking magicians to wear glasses. Why would they when they can easily fix their vision by simply buying and eating a Garuda eye? The fact is, he wears glasses even though he's rich because he has his own reasons. Same goes for Lorraine. Maybe they're just such nice people that they're like, I don't want to benefit from eating the eye of Ashura or whatever, because that would require us to kill Ashura. And, you know, depending on how sentient that Shura is, or how sapient rather, that's uh, maybe not a good thing. And then, Smiling Reesh. Oh, but not her. She does it for the sake of fashion. Then Ron petting Lee's on the head. Remember this scene with Ron, who teases Lee's by calling her a chicky. It'll be fun to compare it with the next chapter. Okay, so if I don't remember that, you'll have to remind me <laughs> next week. So either way, this was a fun set of three chapters. These three were so good. Like, like these three, but also just the whole of Caution. Like I said, I really hyped it up when I finished reading the chapter, but for seriously good reason. Like, this was very 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 good like incredibly good so i'm excited i am excited after reading this to get into whatever's coming next again if it's more chill stuff if we're still taking another section if we're taking reflection to just keep building i am all here for it because this was amazing and if we're finally getting into whatever the big climax of this starting to hit like if we're starting to build past the rising action and into the main meat of whatever incident's going to take place that's cool too both things sound good but yeah with that all aside i i don't know if i have anything more to say i if i do i'll maybe throw it in the comments because maybe i've forgotten it but i always like at least reading all of your comments and replying if i can think of a reply uh but i always love reading what everybody says so thank you all so, so very much uh, for watching. Thank you so much for your support. Like if you did like the video. Comment down there to tell me what you thought of these chapters, my thoughts and reaction to them. Subscribe for more. Uh, Kubera, much, 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 much more on the channel. Follow on Twitter if you want. If you want a link to the Discord server, it is free and open for anyone. Just ask and I can give you a link to it. And if you want to help support the channel by dropping a super thanks, that is appreciated. But if you don't want to just support and help me keep making videos, but if you want to also get your name at the end of every video, also get One Piece videos a little bit early, then hit join down below to become a member. Go to patreon.com slash haku of the tubes or a link will be in the description to become a patron. And yeah, that's it. Thank you so much to people who are uh, patrons and channel members already. Thank you to Chosen Regular Evan Holly, to Magical Girls, Fr Nono, Abyss Knight, JA, The D Van, and Irony. Uh, thank you to Cheriton students David Langstaff and Folded Ghoul. Thank you to Slayer Candid or Cheriton students David Langstaff and Folded Ghoul. Don't know if I misread that. Uh, Slayer candidates SG and Stan Cedar and Pure Element Pate or Pure Element Pate Ardeal. Thank you so 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 much for your support. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time.